And so when all I'm saying is try to run this line, right? And then keep running the program fine, except when you find an error, okay? I say except when you, when you find an error trying to run this line, then display this message. Or uh, find a problem, run, run this line, then you display this message. So let's run this. And now see, now it says the there was a problem opening the file. Now it it, it, it showed the message alright, but notice that it continued after showing the message, it continued with the next line. Now this is a problem because it doesn't know what names file is, and that's why it's telling us local variable names file reference before assignment, meaning we are trying to use this use this names file, but it doesn't exist. There's nothing in there, so it's saying we we've referenced it, we've used it, but then there, there there's nothing assigned to names file. And that's because um, there was a problem here. It couldn't really find this na.txt, so names file wasn't assigned. It displayed the message to us all right. But the only thing is we after displaying the message, we want it to stop. We don't want it to continue from this line going. And so the way you do that is with the else statement here. I'm going to stop this. Else statement here, and then I'm going to indent all of this. And so now what this means is this. What I'm trying to say is try to run this line. You know, keep running the program all right, except when you find an error or you, fi you find it difficult or you find a problem trying to open this line. In that case, then display a message. That's it, right? And that's it. And then the program is going to run. This else part is not going to run. But on the other hand, if you try to run this line, assuming we had names.txt, names.txt, that exists, right? And so it's not going to have any problem opening names.txt and assigning it to names file. And so if there is no exception, right, if there's no exception, then run this, continue with this code. But if there's an exception, meaning if there's a problem opening this file or running this line, then display this message and end the program. But else, if there's no exception, then continue running this line. So, so that's what I'm trying to say here. And so now let's change this back to na.txt, which doesn't exist, right? The file is called name.txt. Run this. See, now it tells us there's a problem opening the file and nothing else, no error. Uh, we didn't get any error. So you run, there's a, prob there's a problem opening the file. And when I change this to names.txt back, it can find names.txt in the folder here. So it wouldn't have a problem. It's going to, it, it wouldn't have a problem. It's going to assign uh, the, f the objects that was created in memory, the file objects that was, that was created in memory to names, names file. There wouldn't be any exception, right? And so the else part is going to run. Run this now, and it says the file has nine lines. But as soon as we make mess up the name of the file, or the file doesn't exist in the folder, let's say we delete this file, right? Then we're going to have a problem opening the file, and so it's going to tell us. It's going to tell us there was a problem opening the file. Now, the name is very generic. There's a problem opening the file. That's very gen gen generic, right? So we can even make it uh, nicer, right? Now, we anytime. Sorry, I'll run this again. So anytime an exception is thrown, anytime something like this happens, so well, let me just show you. Um, so I, I would have to I would have to go back, right? So I'm going to remove, let's see. Um, I, I wanted to show you this, you know. So uh, let me go ahead and remove this, right? The else part. I don't want to confuse it, confuse it, but you understand the else part now, but I'll bring it back. I just want to show you something. Let's undo a couple more times, right, to, to where we didn't have the else part. Okay. So anytime an exception is thrown, so I want that error to show again. So I run this, right, um, well, even before that, let's see. Um, okay, so I'm going to basically... Comment out this line, and I, I wanted I wanted a different way to show this. Um, all right, so let's. I'm going to basically remove remove this. I'm going to remove this. Remove remove the try statement. Right, bring this back, and maybe next time I'll find a better way to explain this. But let's remove bring the, this back, and run it. Okay, so anytime so this is an exception being thrown. This is an error being thrown. And actually, we can see the error name, uh, error name, and we can see the description. No such file or directory na.txt. Anytime an exception is thrown, right? An object, an exception object is is created in memory, right? 
an exception object is created in memory and that exception object has so many has all the information about the, about that particular exception right and so when when that object basically basically when that exception object is thrown we can assign it to a variable and we can print out the uh, the exception message for example so anytime an exception is thrown an exception object is created in memory we can assign that object to a variable and then print out the name of the exception basically the exact error message that is being displayed here and so i'm going to now go back <laughs> so this, this is what i wanted to show you that when i when an exception is thrown and so i'm going to go back have a try state try, try statement around this let's do that sorry and then have an our have our accept statement and then have our else statements and i hope this is where we were all right i hope you, this is clear all right so what i'm going to do is so the way the way we assign that except exception that's thrown to a, to a variable is by saying try to run this line and if you um, try to run this line run the program fine except when you, when you encounter a problem right and so when you encounter a problem an exception object is, is thrown and so now i'm going to if we know the exact name of the error the error we you can we can you can um type it in this case that this error is this particular error i happen to know that it's called an io error but if you're not sure you can use the generic name exception right and it's going to it's, it's going to it's going to basically the program knows the exact exception that was thrown you can assign that exception to a variable and then print out the details of that exception and so accept but when that exception is thrown right we can say accept exception as and then we can assign it to a variable and i'm going to call it um um ex exception thrown this is just our name we, I, a name i created right Anytime uh, an exception is thrown in memory, right? Oh, so sorry. Uh, yeah. So basically, anytime an exception is thrown, right, is thrown, an exception object is is created. And so all I'm doing here with exception as exception thrown is I'm assigning that particular exception. I don't know the name yet, and that's why I have I don't know the particular exception yet. That's why I've used a generic um, name exception. I'm assigning it to the, a variable called exception thrown, and so I can print out. I can just print out this, right? The way you, I print out the, the message, that, that exception message is by printing out just this object here. And it's basically going to print out that exact message. So print, I can say that um, there was an, uh, a problem, right? A problem opening the file. And then I can have a, uh, uh, a colon. And then I can pass in the exception thrown that we just created. And so this is just this is just this, when you pass in the object here, it's just displaying what in what's basically stored the exception. So when you when you print out the, the object this way, it's basically going to display the, the string, the message or the description of the exception. And so it's the same thing, but the only thing is we've assigned the, the particular exception to a variable, and then we are we are now printing the exact message that was shown here, you know, behind the scenes now to the user. You can do that. And so when I run this now, we you see it tells you there was a problem opening the file, error two, no such file or directory, and a.txt. Now this is much more, the user can now see that, okay, there's no file or directory, and a.txt. If I say nam.txt and I run it, it says there was a problem opening the file, no such file or directory, nam.txt. And so try to run, try, try to run this line and keep the program running fine, except when you find an exception right then print this message but when you find an exception assign it to a variable called exception thrown and we are printing that exception thrown which basically we are printing that object which basically prints out the, the description of the exception the details of the exception the you know, message of the exception right we're printing it with the print statement there was a problem opening the file and if there's a problem just just print out this and don't run this else part but if there was no exception, okay, if you don't find any exception else, right, else, then do this. If you don't find an exception, then continue with the code. After running this line, if you, if you if it runs fine, if you find a net file and you don't find an exception, right, then continue with the code. Else, continue the code. 
but if you find an exception prints a message right assign the exception to a variable and prints an exception which basically prints out the message with it so that's so that's what I'm doing here so when I run this as a problem when I change this to the exact name the name of the file that exists in the folder and I run this now it says the file has nine lines and we can go ahead and change or add a few more All right save this and now it says the file has 15 lines um, and so remember I said that I happen to I happen to know that this particular exception is called IO error um, I use exception here because I didn't know the particular exception and so it, by using the exception, the, pro the program will actually know the particular exception and assign it to exception, the variable exception. Through. I happen to know that this exception is also called an I.O. error. And so I'm just being, uh, over here, I've become, I've become more specific, right? And so it's going to throw an, an, an except, uh, it's going to throw an I.O. exception error. Um, anytime an I.O. exception error is encountered in this case, it's going to throw an I.O. exception object. Uh, so it, um, it's going to, first of all, first of all, first of all, it's going to uh, throw an IO exception error, right? But by throwing an IO exception error, it's going to create an IO exception object. And I'm assigning the IO exception object to this, which when we print it, prints the description or the message, error message of the particular IO exception. Over here, I've just become more specific. But if you're not sure of the particular error that's going to be caused from your code, then just keep it generic and say exception. All right, so that's what that's where we are. Okay, so um, I hope this helps and makes sense. All right, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to everything to respond to them. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right, then, bye bye.